Uh, welcome back everybody uh, to uh, another Revit uh, lesson. Okay, so this is uh, number two for our um, project B. Okay, utilizing Autodesk Revit 2016, the full version. Okay, so in the previous um, lesson, what we do is we just be, we set up a basic template. Um, you know, a dot rte file okay for the purposes of bringing into the project so we don't have to go resetting things all the time okay so in this lesson we're going to start the file using that template file okay and then we're going to go in <coughs> excuse me and we're going to um, bring in an AutoCAD file a survey plan Okay, for the purposes of um, creating some topography and site information um, for our project. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we've got to create our project. Okay, so we're going to start a new project using that template that we created. So we're going to go to our big R. Okay, and we're going to go new. New. new project file I'm going to go architectural template because we're doing an architectural job and I want to create a new project just in that little bit in there and I'm going to go browse and theoretically it should go to the template folder okay so if I click on this it's um, typically in your C drive Okay, and tucked away in program data and things like that. It's actually hidden in um, hidden files and things like that. So you go to our Windows um, to um, unhide a few um, um, folders to be able to see all this information normally. Okay, but in the last lesson we created the YouTube template, so that's the one we're going to use. So YouTube template.rte, and I'm going to open that file. There we go, YouTube template. And we're just going to go OK. Let Revit do its thing. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. I do have a bit of a cold at the moment, so might the occasional cough. OK. Now, for those that uh, followed the previous lesson, one of the things we did in the template is we inserted a an A3 sheet, so we can see that straight away. Um, and if we go to our elevations, okay, we can see that we set our ground floor at 300 millimeters. We created a ceiling level at 3050 millimeters. So these are these are relative levels, okay. And the distance between the ceiling level and the ground level or ground floor is 2750 millimeters, okay. So nine foot um, stud, okay. So that's um, why we've done it. So it's a pretty standard way of working uh, for, for construction method in Australia. Okay. All right. So where we want to go first up is I want to go into the site plan. So just double click on there. Okay. So site plan looks very much like all the other plans. We've got a bit of um, site project base point and things like that. We're not going to stress about that right now. Okay. So, but what we need to do from this point here, um, actually site plan, could we work from the ground floor plan? We're going to find out. Okay, is we need to insert a CAD file. Now I've created a very simple um, AutoCAD file for the purposes um, of this project and I'm um, going to find you to show you how to locate that. Okay, so what we need to do is we're going to go into our ribbon, so we've got architecture structure there, insert. To go to our insert tab. Okay, now there's two options to bringing CAD files into a project. We can link them. Okay, so we can link a CAD. Now you effectively could say this is, there we go, linking is similar to having an XREF in. Okay, that's really, really handy if you're using massive files um, and very complex projects certainly where you've got collaboration and um, or works work sharing 
For a simple project like this, we can use the import CAD function because it's a, such a small file, it's not going to clag up our, our job for two, in any major way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on import CAD. Okay, brings up a typical you know search window. So now what I need to do is I just need to very quickly locate where this folder file is. Da da da, supernatural. Da 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 da. YouTube, double story project. So you need to know where your CAD file is stored. Okay, there's my survey CAD file. Now the temptation right now is to go open because you've selected your file not a good move especially if you're using a file that has been generated by somebody that you don't know which is typically the case so it could be a survey or an engineer or something like that okay and um, so there's a couple of things we need to do first before we um, bring that in okay so number one colors okay If it doesn't really matter whether we use D, um, AutoCAD or MicroStation or things like that. These are those all the other systems are layer-based systems, okay? And they'll use different colors for different layers. So if we preserve the colors, okay? If there's a yellow layer or an orange layer, they will appear in here. So, but you can, as you can imagine, a light color on a white background is a little bit hard to see. So my recommendation at this point here. To click this little down arrow, okay, and go black and white. We just need to see the lines, okay. The next uh, dialog here is layers and levels, so we can actually filter out, choose what levels and layers to bring in. Um, if you can open the original CAD file, you can have a look at what levels you need. Um, but generally, I'll import all of them for a, for a starting. Just so at least I can look at my CAD files. Okay, uh, then we have import units. Really, really important here. Okay, so at the moment, by default, well, by default, Revit is look going to go auto detect. It's going to attempt to bring these this CAD file in at the correct scale. Okay, but if I click on that down arrow, there are a range of other ways that we can we can do. But first things first, we're going to use auto to auto detect. Okay. <coughs> Positioning. Okay. Auto origin to origin, or I could go um, center to center, which is probably a bit more practical. Okay. So we'll look at the for the center of the CAD file and place it into the center of the Revit file. So the idea, if I move this over a little bit, if all going well, the CAD file should pop up in the middle here. Okay. Next one, place at ground floor level and orient to view. So make sure I've still got that checked. Now I'm just going to go open and I'm going to see what happens. A little bit of thinking. There we go. Absolutely spot on. So if I zoom in a little bit. Okay, so there is our CAD file. Okay, so if I click on it, okay, you'll see a blue <coughs> line thing come around with it. That means it's a single entity. Okay, so it's like a group or a family. Um, we can't manipulate it in its current state. Although if I click on it I can do have the options of doing a partial or a full explode. Um, if you've got a really big CAD file I highly recommend that you do not do a full explode because it will break every single piece of the CAD file. Okay, and if you go too far after doing that um, it's just about impossible to clean up after that so um, just be very careful with the explode it can be a bit messy okay but fundamentally that is it so um, so what have I got here I've got I've got this CAD file it's a bit of a, it's a site block and it's saying I've got uh, 14 meters at uh, zero degrees zero minutes of you know I'm cheating a little bit at the moment so zero is straight up so that's north Okay, I've got some RLs here. Okay, so t typically in Australia we get um, a lot of surveyors. If we don't use um, Australian height datum, they'll quite often just set an RL, uh, a temporary benchmark of 100.0 meters, just as a nice arbitrary number. So that's what I'm working with at the moment. 
Okay, so we've got an RL of 100.1 there, uh, RL of 100.4 there, so it's next to no change in level. Very, very subtle changes. Um, this one's a little bit higher, so I'm expecting that we're going to get some fall from this corner here down to here. Okay, so a little bit of site information. As you would know, if you have a survey file, you have a lot more than this, but for a project B this is certainly going to be enough. Okay, last bit the thing I want to do here is I want to test this CAD file. Okay, so this is fully snappable so I can go in here and check it. So I'm going to use my little measuring tool here. Again, oh, that's right, I can use Q1 because I've, re I've already set that check those um, short codes. Okay, so I'm just going to go snap there, endpoint, over to there. There we go. If I zoom in, 30,000 millimeters, 30 meters. I'm very happy with the way things are going. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to leave it right there, and um, in the next um, tutorial, we're going to apply some boundary lines to the title, and we're going to create a topo surface so that we um, have our canvas in which to construct our building. So we will see you then.